Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Altered Carbon Season 1 Episode 3, it's called In a Lonely Place. So full spoilers for the episode as per usual and this episode largely revolved around a, a get together, a party that Bancroft throws mm. and he invites everyone that he thinks might want to have killed him at some point and uh, you know Kovac goes, uh, Ortega gets invited to like be the the police kind of presence to like monitor things yeah it's it was more of a screw you we we, we're just doing this to show how powerful we are yeah that's what it was it was a power play because the lawyer comes down and is like yeah you have to come and she's all pissed like no one can get this these things approved this quickly and it's like yeah that's how powerful we are is we can get this done in like an hour and we can request whoever we want yeah because she's like oh that's a uniforms job and it's like nah requested you and captain's basically like I know you hate it. We hate it. Just go up, smile, yeah. come home. Obviously, she's got this rivalry going on with Bancroft, and yeah. you know, the captain's aware of that. He's like, just, just go, please, yeah. just get it over and done with. So, so that's the whole thing. And obviously, uh, Kovac goes and recruits uh, Vernon, who we met. Obviously, Lizzie's father makes a deal. He'll try and help Lizzie. He'll try and look into that as well. If he like gives him some backup, so he's got someone watching his six, as he puts it. Uh, so Lizzie's AI, or you know, uh, you know, digital imprint or stack goes into the, the hotel and Poe kind of looks after her because yes. uh, every time like the, he's, her dad jacks in to, to see her, he's actually causing more damage to her because her thing's not stable. So yeah. this is better for her to be here until they can figure things out. So uh, that, that was kind of the premise of the episode. I, I will say I do think this one was a bit of a slog. I think this was easily the weakest of the three. It's funny because I think it's the best of the three. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I thought the... the party by and large was tedious as hell uh i I was really not into uh mingling with almost anyone that was there it felt like it was dragging out this was the shortest episode so far and yet it felt the longest to me no no see all the all the stuff the party him you know going around like the 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 mediocre investigating shall we say Mm -hmm. because he's not particularly subtle I liked all of that stuff quite a bit. Like more than oh, more really? than I have any of the uh, the mystery investigation stuff in the oh, last. Oh, that's one. interesting. That's, that's, that's interesting. Uh, on the upside, I'm hearing a lot of buzz that episode four's uh, not. Yeah, open. I'm looking forward to it. So, so we'll be getting to that tomorrow and see what episode four's all about. But uh, this one did do me feeling. Like, I'm not down on the show uh, after this one, but like this, this for for me, this was the meandering uh, that, that I was worried that was going to happen with the ten episode season. Uh, I, I felt like we didn't accomplish a whole lot. And I, I think part of the problem as well is that the, where the plot goes in the party, where, okay, we've got these two people who are a married couple who are going to fight for, for our entertainment because whoever wins gets an upgraded sleeve. Because it's actually a fight to the death because they can just go into a new sleeve. And it all just felt like this, this surface level kind of, like I've seen this trope done so many no, times. That, of, that was probably the, the weakest part of the actual plot. It was nice mm, to look at. Yeah. But... It was, it was the weakest part of the episode in that sense, for sure. The only, the only part I liked was at the end when they're like, you know, he's got his broken leg. Because after, after, Kovac ends up in the fight and he doesn't kill anyone. Everything, you know, Ortega like sort of turns off the anti-gravity thing. And he's like, I now we get nothing because like he's not dead. I can't afford to like fix his leg. And Kovac just picks up the throwing star and just kills him. <laughs> and he's like, right, I win, but you can give them the prize. So both of them get new sleeves. Uh, so there was little ideas I liked. The other thing that I kind of liked, although it makes things confusing potentially in the future, is that at one point we think uh, Miriam Bancroft is like there, and she is in the episode. Or we see her a few times in the episode. That it's actually her, but at one point it's her, but it's not her. It's actually her daughter wearing her mother's sleeve, which is creepy as shit because she's having sex as her mother. Yeah, it was really creepy, and but I really liked it as an idea. And you know, when Kovac is questioning, she, and he calls her the the kid, and she's like, "I'm not a kid, I'm 67." <laughs> of like, oh, okay, yeah, kid by her mother's standards, sure, but he should have been like, yeah, and I'm like 270, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the difference is she's actually lived. Oh sure, years, yeah, he's, he's he's just he's been asleep a lot of it, yeah, yeah. for for a long time. But still, uh, that that's, that would have been my comeback though. I'd be like, I was born in this state, so yeah, shut yeah, it, shut it, young get off yes. my lawn. Uh, but you, can't wait, you can't wait to pull that out, can you? <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, I, I'm going. I don't. I don't think I'm. Even if I don't need a cane, I'm buying a cane just, just so I can shake at them. Watch the old man. It's like, hey, get off my lawn. Yeah. Damn kids. 
Yeah. But uh, so that's interesting, and he brings up, of course, that the 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 one like gun in the house so it was it was a biometric lock. Well, our mother's hand, even if it's not her, uh, yeah. although her reason for not killing is is pretty good because it'd leave her penniless. So it is, but it it, begs, it introduces the idea that we hadn't considered before is someone could have you but you know someone else could have used yeah. one of these bodies yeah I, either him or her like they could have got into one of their bodies and yeah, yeah uh, and uh, that, that honestly hadn't crossed my mind up until this point so i was like yeah. Do you know what that's, that's uh even though here it's like okay we ruled her out as a suspect mm. i thought it was a good way of introducing the idea for later yeah okay okay um and also i like that in the future secret passageways are still behind bookcases I think that's just to be traditional. I feel like they did make that choice just because... I, I think so too. I felt it was like, really? Raise raise it up off the floor like three, four millimetres? Why is it scratching that so badly every time it opens? <laughs> Cause, poor no, but that, poor but, design work. But then it's really obvious. I mean, it's obvious if there's big scratches, admittedly, but if there's a gap, that's what you know someone's looking for. I know, for. but you've got, you got to do it a bit better. Just, maybe just put a rug down, a little, little mat or something. Okay. And then the oh, mat, right. then the mat is screaming, "Hey, this is the secret passageway entrance." Yeah, no, no. Do you know what the solution to all this is? Mm-hmm. Carpet that entire pathway. Ah, okay, there you go. That's 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 yeah. Make make it a drop in the ocean and not a not a a, a exactly. boat and a little paddling pool. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, so no, I just thought the party was like mostly kind of like he's going around talking to people, and it was it, it it was all this like intrigue of like, asking them questions, and he's talking to Bancroft again, and I feel like his conversation with Bancroft was starting to get a little bit repetitive because it just kind of feels like I, I'm powerful and I want everyone and blah blah. blah. That's that's fair. Uh, I I liked Bancroft actually making the public play of no no, no I own you mm. and you know he says it to the room. I thought that was uh, a bit more interesting than the kind of subtle behind your game backs that he was doing. Yeah, I could, I could see. Uh, I like that Vernon's actually more involved, though. I, I like that he's going to stick around as this like weird partner in crime. For now. I mean, there's a little hint that he's not going to last. Well, yeah, you get a little flashback where apparently envoys were like trained to, like, oh, if you're on your own, then you recruit from you know around you. Yeah, uh, you inspire loyalty in, the, in some locals, build up your own little army, the uh, pack. I think she's in a wolf analogy, isn't she? Yeah. Um, but obviously, we're building that he has some uh, he has some morals, so maybe he won't go with the whole they're expendable thing. Maybe not. I think yeah. it'll be interesting when the time comes to see if he follows the core training or if he kind of goes, no, 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 I'm doing this my way. I think he's a. I think he'll be around at least until just before his daughter comes back. Mm, if, if not when his daughter comes back so they can have some scenes together before some, he... some dramatic irony in, in getting her yeah. him gone just before she's okay yeah uh, because we get a little bit from her inside like you know the, the virtual world where she's just kind of she's basically just talking about her mother uh, like you know being put in ice for what she did uh, but she, she phrases it in a very sort of you know po- poetic way she's like oh she stole stole stories from the stars and then they put her on ice. There's those icicles dangling from her. <laughs> yeah, okay, very she's, good. She's uh, very out of it. Yeah, she, she, yeah, she's a little bit uh, out there right now. But that that was kind of. I thing. feel like there's going to be something, you know, because she's saying everything. It's kind of cryptic in the way she's saying things. Mm. I feel like there's going to be a key piece of information in oh, what, sure. what she's saying. Um, I mean, it could be what she said already, but so far I understood what she was saying so far that yeah. I don't think she's done it yet but I feel like yeah she'll probably say something super cryptic and it'll be like turn out to be like oh that's that means this and yeah yeah I think so not again I, I agree not what she said so far mm. but in the next episode or two yeah of course Ortega helping like stop the fight and stopping the, the you know the, the like by turning off the gravity thing I mean obviously she's still very wary of uh, of Kovac but obviously it's the first time that she's helped him in a weird way yeah, and she gives him back the gun, mm-hmm. so maybe he's starting to get a little bit of, not respect, but yeah. like... I do like a partner. I, I like like him talking to her over the comms and like hacking into all the cars. Because they're trying to solve the crime, the girl who fell out the sky. They think she yeah. came from a vehicle, like, one of the flying cars. So they're like looking into all the flying cars with all the rich people. And he, yeah. he's, he's like trying to like, it was like 170 vehicles he was trying to like <laughs> hack into. <laughs> yeah, and him joking about her drinking and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> what was it? A, a Muslim, not a monk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a, a Muslim, not a monk. It's yeah. like are you, all you infidels, you drink whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think a chemistry. Uh, I, I, I like uh, Ortega's grown on me a little bit. Uh, I like a partner. Uh, mm. 
Kov- Kovac goes back and forth. Like I like him more when there's like those moments of humanity, and yes. then 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 he'll have narration that like is really pretentious, and I'll be like, ah, oh, <laughs> shut up. Narration is still the worst part of the show for me. Shut, shut up, Kovac. We were doing this because much like before, I said this last time. Although I enjoyed last episode more than I did this one, is that it's playing with a lot of tropes that we're very used to. I, I can see this episode in a different mm. TV show. Uh, but, 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 you know, they just wouldn't be in the sky. It'd be like a, just a function at a mansion. You know, yes. I can see, I can see it playing out the same way, and I can see, you know, what a lot of the episodes are probably going to be, uh, and that's fine. This one, I feel like you could have done a lot of intrigue, and I, I can see me liking this episode with different things. I, I just thought a lot of the actual conversation felt meandering and didn't really do a whole lot, I guess. That's fair. I think I enjoyed the high society and the way they reacted to things. Mm. So that was working for me. Because we, we've not really experienced their their side of the culture yet. Because we've got hints yeah. of it, but we've always seen it from an outsider's perspective. Like Ortega kind of judging them. Whereas here, we kind of get it unfiltered as it is. Here's something I actually I know I, this was probably in the last one as well because we obviously we met Vernon last time. But his place is on a bridge, like they're, they're on like, the bridge of the city. Yeah. Uh, and I actually I noticed that it was just all these living places on the bridge, and I sort of laughed and went, "Oh yeah, they've got no need for bridges because all the cars fly." So yeah, they would just build on it. <laughs> Why not? It, 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 it occurred to me as well. I didn't notice it last episode either. I was like, "Yeah, hey, that's a huge ass bridge." Yeah, that's just a you know. I, I don't know if this is made specifically be a particular city. Maybe they mentioned it in the first one. I can't remember. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. But I thought, oh, let's say that's the that's the Golden Gate Bridge, right? For, for it looked like sake. it could have been for yeah. argument's sake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like no, they just build. Like, that's that's like where the new slums are built because like oh, it's more space. It's just it's just spare space, now, yeah. isn't it? Because you know the cars aren't needing it, so why? Like yeah, sure. Why so not? It's, it's easy real estate. Uh, so no, I like I like I like, I like that little touch. Yeah. I like that. I like the idea that something like a bridge became redundant, so then they just purposed it for something else. Yeah, it's good. It, it's stuff like that makes the the world feel real. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it's, 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 there's all the the small things that are adding up to that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, simple little sci-fi stuff. Uh, Poe actually knows that they were being watched in the last episode when they were having sex, and he brings that up. Yes. Uh, it doesn't really go much place except the fact that he knows. He mentions it to Miriam, and she like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking. Was that Miriam recording it herself uh, yeah, so that maybe. she can use it later? Well, I think it was the creepy dude with the, the goatee because we see him at the party at one point. Because no, Ortega sees it. him and then he kind of vanishes. He Batman's out of the scene. He does. Yeah. Uh, so obviously they're, they're setting up something with him. Uh, who knows yeah. what? But uh, they set up some rules. Obviously, Poe can go into the virtual network and go other places, but he can't actually just go with them to like you know he's in the hotel. He is the hotel as he puts yes. it. Uh, so he can't just like go with them to watch his back, which is why he, which is partly why he goes and gets Vernon. Hey, I, I need help. Yeah, yeah, the AI weren't cutting it. I need people. Uh, the interesting, the moment I thought was interesting was uh, when Vernon like, sort of leans in and you know Kovac makes his uh, pleas like, okay, so I'll help uh, Lizzie, you help me, and he's like, oh, you don't care about her, and Kovac leans in and says, like, don't take this personally, but I don't care about anyone. And part of me is thinking, okay, you're lying. I think you do actually care. I think you have like a moral here, and you you have a problem with what's it's, happened to her. Uh, I agree because he's been very conflicted. But I like the idea, even if he's not, like even if he doesn't care, he's still like, no, but this 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 helps me out, so I'm going to do it anyway. Well, that's, that's I, why I, think I do like that. See, that's the thing. That's why I like it more that he does care is because he's like, I can't drop this persona because it'll yeah. it'll feel that's phony. Awesome. It'll it'll make him. Like beyond sure of like who I am, it's easier to play the role than it is to actually kind of try and convince them that he actually cares. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so no, I like that. And they go to like a weapons guy uh, and buy some weapons. Uh, it didn't come out of play. They set up a Chekhov's gun, and it didn't come out of play this episode. Obviously, it will later on. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. But it's this fancy gun where the the, 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 the it comes back. The the, the the I don't want to call it a bullet necessarily because it's arguably like a, like a magnetic spike. Yeah. It fires and then it comes back into the gun. Yes. So we'll see uh, what fun we have with uh, that. I, I can see it'll be you know the shot. Oh, you missed. Did I? Through the back of the head. Yeah, but of course we'll know it's coming because we'll know it's that gun. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be something that we we're, we're in on, and we can laugh at the the villains. At the end of the episode, Kovac goes back to the 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 whorehouse to talk to the the. Uh, I think Alice Alice was her name. Alice. That yes. We spoke to her last episode, and she looks really rough. Someone's beat her up. And they've made her inject him with something. They've used her as bait. And then an uh, exo spine dude and his buddy, yes. uh, who I recognised actually. Yeah, his buddy, not not exo spine, but the guy who was with him with the beard. That was, uh, what's his name? Was it was it Bebo? 
That wasn't Bebo. Uh, season one of Benona Arp, the bad guy. It might have been Bebo. It may have been Bebo. It was something like that. If it wasn't Bebo, it was, it was something like that. You're right. Yeah, it was something, it was something stupid. stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was him. It was. I recognised yeah. the actor. I was like, that's him. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Someone uh, in the comments pointed out, like, hey, uh, there's an actor, uh, the, the you know, you from from Buffy in this, and I went, what? And they said who it was, and I'm like, I didn't recognise him. And then and they responded saying, oh no, it didn't show up till episode four. I'm like, okay, I've not, I've not, I've not lost the plot. <laughs> I've not lost the plot. I okay, didn't miss. That, that, that's good. I didn't miss the person from the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that was cheap. <laughs> you could, you could have waited till he showed up. No, but I'll use it again next episode. It's fine. <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the the the, the end of Cliff. I mean, it's fine. Like, I'm I'm excited to see like you know how he gets out of this and whatnot. But the the actual moment of like the knocking him out and grabbing him, it was so. Like from last episode, that it felt like nothing in this episode really kind of like led to this moment or built up to it in any way. It was just kind of. I didn't. It was very thing. much left over from before. Yeah, and then yeah, there was again. I think the flashbacks to them as kids and they're talking about monsters. Even though the story they tell about this uh, mad guy who builds builds like a Frankenstein's pa- monster, man, the pa- patch patchwork man, he builds like a Frankenstein type monster, but out of children that he's cut up. Yeah, very sick. And well, at one, it's really at one an analogy for their father. Yeah, and at one point, it, um, it transitions from that to like the the bad guy at the end. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's a nice thing there. I, I did really like the animation of that at the start, yeah. actually, when it was going through the story. I like the story. I, I ultimately wonder how much the 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 flashbacks kind of actually added to the episode. No, that's fair, and I will say the flashbacks lost me a little once the father came home. You know, when they were hiding in the closet watching, and it was just over the top. Mm. I'm like. I kind of got the message of okay, no, no, the father's the bad dude when you tell a story, and instead we just hear that like hear him beat the shit out of their mother for five minutes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really need that. Oh, actually, by the way, going back to the fight, you know, the, the, the zero G fight with the, yes. the, the husband and wife, I thought that was oddly dark, which I kind of appreciate, but at the same time, I thought it was really one sided. Where I, I thought, okay, if this husband and wife are going to fight, surely the point is that it's competitive. But within like a minute, the husband is just winning and he's just beating the shit out of his wife. It got kind of uncomfortable. Because there's yeah. a point where she's kind of like down and he, he just keeps hitting her and she's like, you know, spitting blood up onto the, the rich folk. And you got to imagine every time what, 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 that he wins, it gets easier. Because the whole thing is, right, you know, like he has every time the winner gets mm. a, a better body, a better sleeve. And the loser gets a worse one. And I know before the fight, they say, oh, this is just normal. This is how we make money for the, for the kids. And I, I did like the joke where both him and Ortega, when they, when they say, oh, our kids are used to it, it's like, what age are they? Uh, five and seven. And they both go, they're not used to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, how do you go home? Like, how do they go home? And, like, and she's just like, even if she's in a new body, she doesn't feel pain, of course, because she's in a new sleeve. But it's like, how does she feel about being I know, it's, pulverized? It's surreal. And yeah. I, I guess that's the one place where you say, well, that... That's why he has to step in and stop, not just because he's a good guy, but because he's remembering his own mother being beat up, so he has to interact. Yeah. But I don't think you need that, because like you say, it's just telling you that he's not a completely completely awful person. <laughs> That's yeah, enough. He's not happy watching these two people beat themselves up for yeah, the other for money. rich people's sport yeah. and entertainment. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, it adds a little bit to that, but it is, it's very thin. I don't think it's like super... It is. Super Tell you good. what I did like is uh, one of the, the rich people, the woman who had the snake... Oh, and it's I thought the, that was a great story. It was like a murderer rapist, and she put them out, put him in a snake. Yeah, and then she tells you how you know uh, the one time she tried to take him out and put him into a regular body, he just his mind was so broken, he just lay on the the floor and writhed about. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's punishment. Yeah, that's, that is, that that's is pretty dark. punishment. No, no, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, so. No, like for me, this was a weak episode. I'm not necessarily worried about the rest, but it's the sort of thing where I feel like. This is the sort of thing in a weekly show I expect a, like a couple of these where I'm just going to not be a, that as into it. But it, it doesn't actually hurt the rest of the plot necessarily for me. I just feel like this episode itself didn't do that much. And I spent a lot of it just being kind of like, eh, what time is it? Have we, have we done nearly? Like, no, that's fair. I was kind it's, of I, it's just amusing that I, I was much more into this one for the first time. I, 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 I just I hope that this is just a one episode thing, and the next episode I'll be back. And everyone's saying that we've had multiple comments. Episode four is like a, a big it, it, to the point where I'm concerned. Where 
okay, four is clearly going to be the high point. Is that everything after that going to feel disappointing? Well, no, that, to be fair, the people who have been said that haven't finished the show yet. The, 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 oh, really? The, okay. Yeah, the, the one main comment was like, he's watched the first five, I think, was what he said. Oh, okay, so, fair. So it's not actually the high point, it's just the first, like... This is where it's going. If it's going to grab you, this is where it's going to yeah. grab you. That's it. I, I think it's just interesting that this is the first one for me where the, the investigation, the mystery, has felt relevant, and I enjoyed that stuff more than the, the side pieces. I'm interested in the mystery. I'm just not necessarily interested in him interrogating a bunch of random people that ultimately probably, probably will be able to see again, I imagine. Yeah, uh, probably. So, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm still hopeful for the rest of the show, but I just think this, I think this was a, a weaker slower episode if it, this, is, this is the sort of one where on a weekly show I'd be like oh this was the the, the filler episode well not filler but almost no, I, filler I get what you're saying yeah it felt like it was it felt like it was spinning its wheels I'm saying. I feel like we could have done the same amount of story in half the time I guess is my that, that's fair enough yeah my ultimate thing and then the, the fighting thing just felt kind of I mean a lot of the show is derivative but that felt that was a derivative of something that I that's a trope I just don't like I guess I'm just like a scene that trope. That's fair. I, I enjoyed watching it set to where, the big jazz suite. I thought it was nice. Whereas, well, the show is full of other tropes, the tropes that I typically enjoy, so I don't mind as much. Uh, but yeah, that was, I'm still thinking Poe, though. Uh, oh. po, po, Poe's, yeah, uh, Poe's pretty cool. He's an MVP, so looking forward to more of that. He's, he's almost building a little team. He's got, he's got Vernon to physically watch his back. He's got Poe to do all these digital things. Yeah, Ortega's going to come in for the investigation. Mm. Yeah, and of course it's going to line up with her investigation of the body which will pair uh, them. Yeah, and I know I said uh, Vernon might be a goner because, you know, uh, th- that was the flashback of, you know, they're expendable. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they all are, but one of them, at the very least, is going. I don't know, maybe, maybe Poe gets deleted. Uh, I don't possibly. know, I feel like at least one of his team will... will it could lose. just be a misdirect, though, to make us think it they're could. expendable. It could, yeah. Oh, what do you want, Cat? <laughs> I'm trying to stop you from causing chaos. Yes. So you, don't, yes. you don't get to whinge when I'm holding you. All right? Aye. It's because cats are awful. Cats are lovely. Shut up. Uh, they're eating tiger in this episode, actually. <laughs> just to mention that. Just not gloss over the fact that they had a big tiger cut home. It's true. I assume they just cloned them. Uh, you imagine. Although I, I kind of read it as a... Uh, the, the, the filthy rich can afford only afford a tiger because they're that rare but yeah they probably do just clone them maybe just cost, well I mean we know how yeah. expensive cloning costs anyway but that's true uh, would tiger even taste it that nice I don't know I mean it would be like red meat right I don't know I would assume firefly do you volunteer a slice of meat <laughs> I'll test this theory <laughs> I mean there's only one way to find out isn't there ultimately <laughs> Well, I'll go and cook the cat and find out how good well, cat tastes. I, mean, I feel like cat would be disappointing compared to tiger. I mean, if, I feel like tiger, you know, it's lean. You'd get a steak out of that. Ah, he's a bigger, bigger animal, obviously. Yeah. Like, you, you could have a flank. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I was going to say, I mean, they're, they're both very similar animals, though. Uh, Biologically speaking, sure. Yeah. So how similar is their meat? Like, I'm, I'm just trying to think of, like, something... Because obviously we have, obviously you have like you have beef, which is obviously very different from, uh, say lamb. Yeah. Uh, there's no point in comparing to chicken because you know that's a bird, which is completely. You know, I expect that to be different because it's so. But, you know, yeah, I'm just comparing two mammals. This is going off the deep end. This conversation. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I was just thinking, you know, tigers. They're they're going to be lean, muscular. They that that well, will give okay, it a lot. Okay, here's of a quick. Flavor. Here's a question though. How different does a tiger and a lion taste? I see that. That is the real question. Tiger, lion, leopard, cheetah. Is, is, is tiger, lion like the equivalent of chicken, turkey? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But it's just very similar, but one's just a little bit tougher and or whatever. Yeah. Possibly. Possibly. Anyway, we'll wrap this up. We're talking about yes. really stupid things now. So that has been episode three of uh, Altered Carbon. We'll be back in about 24 hours, give or take, with episode four's review. So thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments. Like, subscribe. Uh, get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head to patreon.com slash mail fuzz TV. There'll be a link to that in the description. And there's a bonuses and stuff over there if you want to check that out. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?